Hello, Meg Miller, an adult services librarian here at Pflugerville Public Library, bringing you our first Crafty at Home for summer 2021. And for this project, we are going to make use of some materials that we had around. Uh, you may recall that we made uh, mortar garden stones a few months back and I had some mortar left over. So I saw a project I thought might be kind of fun. We're gonna do a mortar pendant um, and you'll have a keychain finding that you'll be able to use to finish yours with, or if you have some necklaces around or something that you'd like to attach it to. So as always for those first and this time 50 folks who are able to register through our online catalog, you'll be able to come to the library and pick up your material supply kit. And in this little bag, we got a ton of goodies to get this project completed. So let's take a look at what we have. Um, we are providing, of course, a half a cup of mortar. This is about eight tablespoons, so it should make you about four different projects, very likely. Um, in a small bag, you'll have the silicone mold that we'll use for this project. You'll have a card that has four eye pins attached to it. The um, keychain finding in there, as well as a foam brush. The foam brush is kind of a finishing. We're giving you a little bit of Mod Podge that you can use to seal all of your items. And for mixing, we're providing two little cups. You should be able to get at least two uses out of each, so that'll get you to your four projects. Um, there are also several stirring sticks, as well as a, um, this is a skewer, or there might be a dowel in there that you can use uh, for your project. We've got a little tablespoon. In this other card is the foiling that we've got. There's a gold, silver, and kind of a rose gold in there. And then additionally for decoration, we've provided a few little glass gems that you might decide to use in your project. Or if you've got seashells or beads or something else that you'd like to amp up your project with, we'd love to see it. So I think we've got all our material. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've got my supplies out. Um, and I'm ready to mix up some mortar. Got my little teaspoon here. And really you're not gonna need very much for these projects. So probably a teaspoon per project. So you might actually get a couple more out of there. Got one of my mixing sticks. And I want my um, mortar to be about the consistency of um, kind of runny Play-Doh maybe very thick paint um, so I'm just gonna pour a very little bit probably not even half a teaspoon of water in start with a little bit and mix up and then as I go along so that's a little bit maybe too thick so I'm gonna add a couple more drops of water just a little bit at a time till I get to the consistency that I really like oh yeah that's much better so on to, and I can kind of turn upside down and it doesn't fall off. So just a smidge of water to a tablespoon. Make sure it's all mixed up in there. That's perfect. All right, so I've got my silicone mold and these were actually just silicone candy molds off Amazon. It was a whole sheet. We cut them down and then I've included a small slit in one side of your mold. So you wanna find that. That's where we're going to slide our eye pin through so that we make sure that's really attached in the mortar and we don't have to worry about it coming out. Um, so the dowel or skewer that you received in your kit, that's what we're going to use to kind of wrap this eye pin just around just to make a little corkscrew in it that gives the mortar something stronger to hold on to. If you got the skewer, you'll get a really good tight corkscrew. With the dowel, it's a little bit bigger, so I'm just going to use my fingers to carefully kind of tighten that corkscrew. And we've got the little corkscrew and I'm going to slide the eye pin of my pin, the eye of my pin into the top and just out the mold a slight bit. And I'm going to go ahead and hold on to that while I add the mortar just so I know that it doesn't kind of move around. Although you'll have some play with this once you get the mortar in because it's not set. Um, so you'll be able to kind of work that through. So I'm just going to plop my mortar in here, tap it down some, next little bit of mortar, making sure 
you can kind of lift it a little bit and drop it to try and get some air bubbles out if you've got any. And that'll make sure that it's pretty solid. Take a look at my eye pin, make sure he's pretty straight and not sticking out too, too far. Slide it back in there. All right, actually I think for this one, I'm gonna put just a little bit too much mortar in there. Let's see if I can get some of this out because I'm gonna try kind of a fun thing with my little gemstone here. So I'm gonna do that again where I drop him a little, get it kind of in there pretty solid and set him aside for a second. Uh, the Mod Podge I used on the example to finish off and make sure that um, my foiling and flake metallics stayed on. Um, this time I'm going to start with a little bit on my clear gem. Oh, let's see. Ooh, the green one looks kind of cool, but I like the way the clear will show the metallic through it. So I'm just going to get a little bit of Mod Podge right on the back here just a real thin layer and then i'm just going to drop it right onto my foil push down and when i pick it up it's going to come right off this stuff just loves to stick to your fingers to pretty much everything you don't want it to stick to so give yourself some patience and uh, room wiggle room here when you're playing with the foiling and if it doesn't quite go where you want it to go keep working with it all right here we go so i'm stuck to my finger there we go all right Still stuck to my finger And there now I've got kind of that metallic. I'm just gonna drop them right in the middle. Right there, push it down into my mortar. My towel, actually. Push that down. It's not quite sticking out as much. Alright, so there is going to be and he doesn't look like he's quite centered. And now this is another project that's going to take a few days. You're going to be able to come back to it a couple of times since you've got enough mortar to make multiples. Um, if you've got silicone molds or you find some at the Dollar Tree or somewhere um, at a yard sale, Goodwill, um, that you want to cut up and use, uh, this is a project you could make any kind of shape with really as long as you've got the silicone mold um, that you want to do. I could even see someone who has a 3D printer printing a mold. Um, you might have a little bit more trouble getting the mortar out of a plastic mold like that and the silicone really le lends itself to easy release once this is dry but this is going to take at least 24 hours to dry so you're going to want to set it aside think on what you might want your next one to look like with this one here in my example i really did just put the flaking on some of the the ones i've seen on pinterest and any elsewhere on the internet have used this foiling very sparingly to kind of make it look like there was a, a seam of gold through the mortar more than just kind of as I did it with a coating of the three different metallics. So it's actually been a little bit more than 24 hours later, um, but I've still got my pen in the mold and this is another one that I had done. You can see there's a few little pieces of the mortar that will crack away. You just kind of pull the mold slightly out Remembering that you've got an eye pin that's in there. So you're going to want to kind of pull from the opposite end. My eye pin is here. So I'm going to slowly peel back. And then pull down so that the eye pin pops right out. And there I've got my very cool little gem. Very sparkly in there. Um, if you've got some sandpaper, you can actually smooth the roughened edges of your pendant so this one pop out this one I actually left my eye pin up pretty far um, so I don't know I might try and 
if I got real fancy, put a bead on there or something. Um, but it's real smooth. You can just leave it natural like that. Or you can cover, we've provided the Mod Podge to kind of seal it in there, which I think is what I'll do with this one. Um, I just wanted to try something kind of extra on the back of this little guy just to see, let's see how it works. So I actually have some Mod Podge from another project um, that's just kind of sitting around and it's actually not doing so great. It's been around for a while. Um, and some leftover paints that I also had from another project. Um, so I am literally just going to take some of this paint and add some color to my podge. Just kind of really use that in there. So if you happen to have, you can also try this with food coloring um, or anything else that you might have around. I've got a little bit of blue podge, um, foam brush, or this is a leftover brush from a previous craft. Um, and so I'm just going to really coat this in the Mod Podge to give it this kind of cool blue color. You may want to wear gloves, although it shouldn't be too hard to get off. And once one coat dries, you may want to go ahead and add a second coat. A little, a little spot, gotta get back up in there. Kind of making sure it's a smooth, even coat Coming around the edges. Right there. Kind of get a little bit on the front. Right around there. This this coat I'm doing a little bit lighter because I really want to see the gem. And if I was taking a little longer, I would honestly let the back side of this dry before putting pot on the front side. But for video purposing, I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way around. So then now I've got my pendant sealed. I've got a little bit of color added to it, so I can just set that little guy aside. All right. And for the other thing I wanted to show was the foiling that you got. I'm using a lid, so we'll just set them off to the side for now. Um, so on this one, I'm gonna do the um, try and attempt to put on, let's see, let's go for, this my first, that uh, looks like gold. So, got a piece of my gold foiling, I'll use my podge that's a little newer, it's got a little more movement, um, and I'm just going to make kind of a line, then as I can do, if you have a smaller paintbrush left over or even a toothpick, something you could use that would make just kind of almost like it were cracks in the cement. Well, this is mortar, so it's a little different. Just gonna make some small lines. Right on. Put more over there. Don't want it to look too uniform or even or anything like that. Alright. So now that I've got my lines of podge on there. Take my foiling, I'm just going to lay it right over top, tear a piece off here so I can come around the side, 
Alright. Careful with these, they're not super strong. Right, so no. Uh, just another brush here. Uh, peeling off. Let's see how we do. Peel off the excess that I don't really want there. A little bit at a time. Getting it down into the glue, but then I'll be able to brush away the stuff that is not attached. Just kind of really get a thin line. And the longer you leave it on there to dry with the podge, the better your like lines. I'm going pretty fast, so the lines, the small lines that I created really aren't kind of translating through. Um, but if like I have an area where it's starting to come off, I can grab a little more and just put it right back on. Super light. I just kind of want it to look like, you know, found a vein of gold in this here mortar and this is what you're doing. All right. Really, it's starting to look a lot closer to where I want it. And I think I'm gonna let the mortar dry with the podge on it a little bit before I put on a top coat because I will have a suspicion. Oops, still got some gold on my finger. That. If I were, and let's just give it a test so you guys can see. And my foam brush. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tap down a little bit where the foiling is, just so that I don't move it away from where I've got it, if that's where I like it. And when it's just the Mod Podge, you can go kind of heavier, so it looks like it might be white and you won't be able to see, um, but when it dries, it does dry clear. So you shouldn't have a problem seeing your foiling underneath. I'm just kind of dab dabbing on a solid layer of the Mod Podge to really seal this in. So, and you can do a couple of layers, allow one to dry get the um, kind of coverage that you really like. We're gonna add that little guy to the back. There we are. So here are my two pendants. I've added a little bit of color to this one. This one I've given a little bit more of a natural look and then as the podge dries, um, I'll be able to see that foiling through from underneath. And from here, I can hook my keychain finding into the eye pin, or I could get uh, another jump ring and add it to a necklace. Would not necessarily recommend these for earrings. They are pretty substantial. I guess if you had a smaller, um, mold, you might be able to do a little bit more of an earring style, um, but you don't want to pull too hard. So we hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you at the next Crafty at Home 